Oak Theater uh, was started several months ago by actress and director Sherry Peterson. She is actually in the house tonight. Hello, Sherry. Uh, she is a film and uh, television and theater actress that came uh, back to Atlanta. She started uh, right after her uh, MFA in acting, and she came back uh, several months ago, and she started the Oak Theater. And she found out about this space that was, um, uh, I guess I would say dark for a long time, uh, th that you are sitting in right now. It was for about eight years. There was uh, not much activity here, and there were, it was completely dark for about eight years. And so she went to speak to the, um, the powers that be at the Avondale Estates First Baptist Church, and uh, created a part. She uh, made a partnership with them, and so the Oak Theater is now in residence this year at the Avondale Estates First Baptist Church. And I encourage all of you to please go visit the church, go to their services. Uh, they have been very gracious to us, and so um, we really, really want to give a, a, a final shout out to them during this production uh, for the Avondale Estates First Baptist Church. Um, this is a season of truth that she, uh, Sherry Peterson, decided to do several months ago. Our first show was the best Christmas pageant ever, and um, and that was uh, very successful. That was in this past uh, holiday season. And what you are about to see tonight is called Cookie Crumble, Cookie Toss. It is a parody. Raise your hand if you have seen Glendary Glenn Ross. Several people have seen it. Not everybody, though. Okay. Well, uh, the play obviously stands on its own. Uh, most people who have actually come to see the show, they don't know Glengarry Glenn Ross, but it is a Pulitzer Prize winning play by David Mamet. And what we have done here is, it is we have made a parody of that play. You can go downstairs during intermission. I encourage you to read what the dramaturg has put together. It is a presentation of what is a parody and what uh, this parody uh, is actually uh, doing which is uh, the original Glengarry Glenn Ross was uh, about angry men selling real estate and fighting over real estate leads. And this play that you're about to see is a comedy uh, with little girls who are fighting over cookie sales and leads to cookie sales. It is hysterical. And so I encourage all of you to laugh. And uh, me as a director, um, I have been working with kids for about 15 years. I love working with kids. It's pretty much all I do. I write books with kids, I direct kids in theater, I create short films with kids, and uh, so that's what I've been doing for a really long time. And I am embarking on this new genre of theater where kids perform for specific target, target audiences, primarily for adults. And uh, what that means is that kids can come and see a lot of the shows that I do, but adults are really... Um, who walks away uh, appreciating the material because they get a lot of the jokes and um, it's really just geared toward uh, geared towards um, uh, those things resonating, you know, with those target audiences. So I don't really do a lot of theater that just have kid audiences, if that makes sense. You can read my bio. You can go to my website, charliesport.org, and you can read a little bit more about that. The reason I wanted to do this play is because it does examine the dog-eat-dog -dog world of capitalism in its darkest forms and what that can do to us. And um, when you see little girls behaving in such a way uh, <laughs> that some of us adults have taught them to behave, it uh, can be a little bit um, jarring. And so uh, that's why I do what I do so that uh, you, know, you can come and see these little these little tiny bodies up here performing adult-style dialogue, you know, while they're um, exercising this horrific behavior that you know adults have been teaching them. So it really is a message that you know these little monsters do not create themselves; <laughs> we create the monsters. <laughs> and so, uh, without further ado, please enjoy Cookie Crumble, Cookie Toss. I do hope that it uh, inspires you to go out and teach a child to change the world in a positive way and do something nice instead of fight with each other and throw things at each other and treat each other mean and uh, be greedy because you know I think that that's what the problem with our society is and so that's why I chose to do this one so anyway turn off your cell phones and laugh because they feed off that energy okay all right thanks guys She's like, okay, at home I have one of those big green necklaces, and she's the STNs from kindergarten, okay? We go way back, so don't think this is personal. It's just that she's messing it all up. 
I'm not supposed to tell you this, Gail. I'm trusting you, Gail. I can't trust you. Pamela! Okay? Of course. Okay, because her parents are at each other's throats. It's terrible. Her father cleans his gun whenever they fight. It's sick, his gun. Whenever they start arguing, he opens up his gun safe and starts cleaning and arguing like nothing's happening. I've seen pictures of it on Facebook. And God bless her, but seriously now, the girl's crying at recess. You think those leaves aren't seeing the pain in Bethany's eyes? What? The pain! The tortured little girl! That's not what cookie buyers are. That's not who cookie buyers are looking to buy cookies from. They would have to be. You feel me? Now, hold up, hold up. I'm almost done now. You look at the board, okay? On the board. She made no sale Saturday. None. Zero. Nada. That means zeros. It means nothing. She messed up in the head, and you need to give those leaves to someone who can close. You feel me? You, okay, you? Pamela, I can't give you any more leaves. That's horse doo Gail. Pure, unadul unadulterated horse doo doo. Pamela. The kind of horse doo doo that horse doo wipes off the feet. I know you have discretion here. <laughs> it's your job giving the leaves to the closers. You're not closing. Wait, what are you saying? Not closing. Cut. Okay, coming back with three unsold boxes of Barbie Dozen is not closing. And she has to be that day, but she's on the board. That stupid board. Let me tell you something, Gail. You listening? Because I was out selling the 10th graders when I was in the 5th. You know why? This face. This face is irresistible. <laughs> it has turned from as cute as Pomeranian puppy to Sarah Jessica Parker. Why do you think I'm the one who's always featured on the cover of Girl Come Monthly? <laughs> <laughs> That's an old issue. You know, your face didn't sell any Barbados since Saturday either. No, I closed one of those leaves. No, you! Oh, I did, I did. You know what happened? Stupid box, okay? So I sell them the cookies. I give them the box. Then this greedy bottom feeder kid goes for it and opens up the jar and boxer for the mother finishes writing the check. And you know what happened? The darn plastic is ripped. The mother thinks it's unsafe and was hysterical, talking about poison. Now you're gonna blame me for some juices and the girl from the cookie factory making a mistake with the plastic wrap in the you box? You don't get on the board with excuses, Pam. You get on the board with sales. You've been in the game long enough to know that. There aren't two nights in the game long enough. Line up feet proven. Whatever, uh, Pam. Uh, Editing. You're off the board. It's out of my hands. If you're not in the top three, you get random lead. Random? My shiny? Tuckus. I'm getting a <laughs> soggy one at the bottom of the hamburger is what I'm getting. Other day you saw me to Ponce. Ever try selling the pan They have an address. <laughs> they had an address, all right. I'm using up all my mace on that stupid pit bull chain to a gate. That's not a lead. That's so war It's random, Pam. Listen, Brand. okay? Yo. I need this promotion. I've been a D-grade girl for what? Going on two years now? My allowance is based on my We're greatness. getting some hot new leads now that meeting close leads you have, you might get one. I can't close these. Look, Pam, when they come in, just give me two good leads. Just two. Oh, I can. You can. You can.
can't. I can't what? I'm from headquarters, you little prissies, and I can do whatever I want. Strip you of your uniforms, your little badges. Oh, yes, I can. You got one week to get back in. Now, you know what first prize is, right? A trip to Disney. You want to know what second prize is? A man on a stick ready to paint. What's a man on a stick ready to paint? Third prize, you're out. You got that? You got that? Girl Club paid good money for those leads. You think it's easy finding people hungry for box after box of cookies in this country? If you can't close those leads, you can't close doo-doo. And you are doo-doo. The leads are dead beads. Oh, oh, oh. The leads are dead beads, huh? You're the one with the problem, pal. Pam, you call yourself a sales girl. You can't close, and then you go home whining to your mommy and your big brother. Well, there's just one thing that matters in this game, and that is move those cookies. Move them. You got it? Move them, or Girl Club will kick out your baby powdered little butts. Now, pay attention. A, B, C. A, always. B, be selling C <coughs> cookies and C H I P. C, the cookies are delicious. H, won't you have a free sample? I, I know you want to buy several boxes. P, put some money in my hand for 20 boxes of Barbadosen. <coughs> These people have two thousand. <laughs> they are waiting to give you their money. Are you going to take it? Are you a girl enough to take it? Oh, you're a nice girl. Polite to your parents' friends. Well, I don't give a monkey screaming red trying to attract a maid tushy. Oh, you don't like it? You don't like it? Then leave. Go play field hockey or something. When I was your age, I'd go out with two leads and come back with four sales. And the cookies weren't even this delicious. Hey Atlanta, this is your host Simone Jameson for On The Guest List, brought to you by StreamATL.net. Tonight I'm here at the Oak Theater with founder, actress, and community director, Ms. Sherry Peterson. How are you feeling tonight, Sherry? I'm excited that you guys are here and honored that you would um, take time to come and see what we're doing. Absolutely. So now you have a, a number going tonight, Cookie Crumble Cookie Toss, which is one of your original numbers in terms of plays. What led you to really create that and sort of create this movement around it? Well, um, I'm going to probably just speak a little bit more broadly about the theater, but I will speak a little bit about the, the show. I want to save some of that information um, for our director. Um, as the artistic director, my, um, my goal is to produce new work and work that will provoke thought and change and um, stir people to... Um, change the way they think and feel and act and believe. And uh, Cookie Crumble, Cookie Toss is actually a parody of a classic David Mamet play um, called Glen Gary, Glen Ross. And um, the goal in producing this show was to really uh, hone in on what ambition and greed can do to human behavior. And um, Mary Claire will elaborate. Mary Claire Br Branton is our director. She'll elaborate a little bit more about how, told through the lens of children, it's even more horrifying to see this human behavior when innocent children are uh, partaking in it. Mm -hmm. I know. We're all excited to, to get a synopsis and to really see that play in action. So now what we want to do now is we want to know a little bit more about you, Sherry, and how you came to grips with sort of founding this theater? What is your background? And tell us about your journey. Okay. Um, well, I have been working in theater from the time I was very young. I went to college for, as a theater major, started working in regional theaters, and I feel um, very strongly about using the art form to tell stories. Uh, but more than that, it's, it's more uh, than just a channel of expression for artists. I believe that um, theater, 
Twitter specifically is a, uh, a platform to teach. And I know that people go to the theater to be entertained, but my um, calling as an artistic director is really to tell stories that will um, provoke change in a person's heart and in their mind and in their behavior. And, um, and I knew about this um, theater that was sitting empty um, here on the campus of First Baptist Church of Avondale Estates in Avondale Estates, Georgia. And uh, I approached the administration here and asked if they would consider letting us start something new. It had been dark for eight years. It's been around for 12 years. Um, so they seem to like the idea. And uh, there, it's a very artistic community here. The people that run the church um, where uh, here, the campus, uh, they're very artistic themselves. Uh, this church itself is, is known for the Avondale Children's Choir that has 150 kids. They, uh, they go to Carnegie Hall and perform. So they were really um, thrilled with the idea of even extending that artistic arm even further further and um, opening and breathing some life back into this theater. Wow, I love that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is so cool and it's such it's such a good use, you know, of a, of a space like this and in an art form in that you're actually able to give back to the community in that type of way. So awesome for that. Thank you. So we want to know more about your acting and your directing background. What other projects have you worked on and what type of message do you really send in, in those? Well, um, as an, I started in, in theater as an actress and um, have, like I mentioned earlier, did a lot of regional theater. Um, I, from that point, I, I feel that theater really speaks most to me. It, it's where I energize my, my batteries. But I did extend into um, television and film when I moved to Atlanta. Lived in South Florida, where I worked for a long time in theater. And um, had some opportunities to travel internationally and direct um, while I was there. Have have traveled to uh, Scotland and Nicaragua, Russia, the Ukraine. Um, directed and, and taught in a university for a brief time in Russia, and uh, directed large scale musicals and uh, and but yet also directed street theater. So I'm I'm really more about just telling stories. And when I came to um, Atlanta, which was back in 2007, I, I really started getting into television and film at that time because Atlanta was beginning to blow up with, by a little guy by the name of Tyler Perry. And, uh, and so I um, was on one season of House of Pain and uh, did a film with Jim Carrey. I had an um, opportunity to um, work with a good friend of mine by the name of Tony Hale, who's a two-time Emmy Award winner, who also serves on the uh, board of the Oak Theater. And he was just here a couple of nights ago. He's in town shooting a movie and is going to be uh, doing a benefit for the theater next week. Mm -hmm. Really cool to have some of those high-profile names under your belt. So you'd mentioned earlier that you you put together studies and classes in, in Nicaragua and, and Russia. How do how does teaching abroad, teaching acting abroad in those countries compare with teaching in Atlanta or teaching in Florida? Mm -hmm. That's a great question, actually. Um, I think that. Uh, the heart of an artist is one that connects across cultures and uh, languages and and storytellers really all have the same goal and when of course when i was directing and teaching in russia i worked through an interpreter which was very interesting but um i i think it was really inc incredible to connect with the individuals that i got to direct and and teach because when you have a, a breakthrough, an artistic breakthrough, it's the same for a, a Russian-speaking person as it is for an English-speaking person. And when uh, you can experience truth on a level as an artist, it's it's just elating. And to be able to uh, to arrive at that with a person and see that light bulb go on, it's exciting for me as a director and a teacher. So I, I'm inspired by artists of all kinds. You know, I I, I think that um, I I think I see visual art as storytelling. I see music as storytelling. I see performing arts, theater as storytelling, film, television. We're all really telling stories to try to communicate truth and connect with others. And I think if, if I had to pinpoint something that that is inside of me it's the calling to connect the calling to connect and to 
to transmit truth through whatever medium I'm given as as a platform. I love that. Thank you so much for that, Sherry. Okay, so how can we, so what, in terms of what you're expecting to see tonight and in terms of audience for the play, what is, what would you say is the fulfillment point for them? What what message do you plan to send across to them? What do you hope to inspire them with? Let's start with that. Yeah, and I think um, to, t to kind of approach that from two different angles, um, what's happening in this theater tonight is not just for the audience members. It's for the the actors that are on stage as well. Um, and I understand that because as an actor, uh, sometimes I have felt like I was telling the stories for the audience, but then I realized through that process that I was telling the story for myself. And I think that, that the, the truth and the message behind Cookie Crumble, Cookie Toss, um, which it, it, it actually can uh, bring an anti-bullying message uh, as well, has really affected the actors, the young actresses that are on this stage. I think that they've not only been able to have the exciting revelation that they have gifts and talents and that they can use those gifts and talents to tell stories, but that they have the ability to um, share that with others and change the way other people think. And, and in seeing their behavior exhibited through the innocent um, you know, portrayal, through, even through children, it's more, it, it, it changes uh, the way a person thinks about maybe their own selfish ambition, their own greed. Very powerful. Thank you so much for that, Sherry. Mm -hmm. And so now we look forward to many great projects from you. you. Shout out your website and social media and also what other things you might be working on at the moment. Uh, our website is uh, oaktheater.com, and that's T-H-E-A-T-R-E, -E, spelled fancy. Uh, it's the British spelling. And um, so please visit our website, and, um, and please look for more productions coming soon. We are going to be doing new work by Atlanta Playwrights, and we're going to bring out some traditional stuff too so love to see you guys we come like come support yeah. the arts we, we will support thank you so much thank sherry you. and thank you for watching it atlanta this has been an exclusive interview with sherry peterson i'm your host simone jameson for on the guest list
know that they've got insurance. Insurance? Probably. Who cares? It's easy to insure cookies, isn't it? Probably, probably, yes. How are you? Peachy, you mean the board? Well, I'm nothing on the board. I'm not even on the board. Beth Van me? I get caught up in homework and stuff. I can't, I can't. You can't what? Move those cookies. I can't, can't close. <laughs> well, I've seen the leaf they're giving you. People who are interested in cookies when Savannah frowns were hot. That was eons ago. Nobody likes Savannah frowns anymore. And nobody can even eat ginger rooms. My garbage disposal can't even eat a ginger room. <laughs> no good. Hey, 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 don't you, hey, don't talk like that, okay? I suck, Bethany. Don't talk like that. You just had a bad couple of weeks. That's all. That's all. Remember, remember when you were in band? How great you were. Marching up right there. Band? Twirling that baton. School just seems like another universe now. You were great. Seems all <laughs> I do now is so cookies. It's, it's taking over my life. I haven't done homework in gosh. <gasps> There's a new cookie coming out. So they say. I heard it's gonna taste good. <laughs> Thank you for watching us Atlanta here on the guest list. I'm your host, Simone Jameson. Joining me now is Marie Claire Branton, the director for Cookie Crumble Cookie Toss, and is also one of the founding chairs for the Oak Theater. Great to see you out here tonight, Marie. I am so glad that y'all are here. Thank you so much for coming out. Yeah. We are having so much fun doing this show. <laughs> Absolutely, and now we got a little snippet and a sneak peek, and oh my goodness, like the dialogue and the momentum from these young actors is just so powerful. How did you sort of group together this, this powerful cast of, of basically pint-sized superstars? <laughs> pint-sized superstars. Well, um, about 10 years ago, I ran across Jim Davies. He is a playwright at Working Title Playwrights. And I had the vision of doing a parody of David Mamet's Glengarry Glen Ross. And if uh, anybody knows that, <clears throat> it is um, a play about angry men selling real estate. And I thought that it would be really funny to flip it on its head because David Mamet is really known for his misogynist tendencies and um, his very intense, really grotesque dialogue. Um, there's something called Mamet Speak and I thought that it would be uh, really funny to take his uh, dialogue style, which Mamet Speak is when actors talk over themselves, there's a lot of dialogue overlapping, there's really long monologues and then people interrupting each other and that kind of thing. And I thought it would be really funny to do a parody of that with little girls um, to sort of emasculate him since he is such a misogynist. <laughs> well, at least he's, uh, be, uh, he's accused of being that quite a bit. And so I thought, okay, what is the opposite of angry men? Well, little girls, right? So instead of angry men selling real estate, I thought that it would be really brilliant to show um, little girls selling cookies and create the drama into a comedy. And so that's what we have done here. And we have gotten some of the most talented actresses in Atlanta that are, you know, these pint-sized superstars. Um, a lot of the agents that uh, represent children in the Atlanta area, they, you know, some of them sent uh, the girls over for casting and everything. And not everyone is represented, but most of them are. Yeah. And you can see it, and you can you can feel it. You know, it just it's really pulsating, and, and they're real, they're really snappy, and they're 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 just so on cue. How, how you got them to work together like that? So now. <clears throat> Well, uh, I've been working with kids for about 15 years, and uh, I'm an acting coach for kids um, who, uh, I'm an audition coach for kids, but I've been directing children's theater for, I don't know, about 15 years now. And um, it's just it's just what I'm good at. I, I get these kids to really believe what they're doing, and um, I get them to feel like when they walk out on a stage, they can accomplish anything. There is nothing they cannot do. So, you know, um, Adults performing mammoth style, you know, dialogue is really difficult. But kids, it's almost impossible. And so it's, um, I, I don't know, acting is all about confidence. So if you take these children and give them the confidence that they can go out there and really just do anything, they, they can. They have to believe it. So a good director is getting them to believe they can. And then they can. And they do. <laughs> As, as we've seen, <laughs> yes, you you have some, you are some force, Marie. <laughs> Absolutely. So now, you you had mentioned that this this play in itself is a, is a parody on mammoths, 
misogynistic tendencies, yeah. right? So do you normally direct or go in the direction of these types of plays or, or is it in your specialty or of what you plan to create? Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, I, 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 don't, I don't know if I like the word pioneer, but I guess I am a pioneer of sorts um, in a new genre of theater where children are performing primarily for adult audiences. Now, the, um, the main reason for that is because the material I like to work on is a lot, it's, it's either esoteric, it's political, it's a parody of something that is, you know, something for adult audiences. And so um, the, the references in my plays, you know, they resonate with adults, not children, even though children can come and watch it because it's not, it's not a matter of anything being offensive, it's just a matter of who is the audience target. My audience target is adults. And the reason I started getting into using children to tell these stories is because adults have stopped listening to each other. Adults have stopped listening to each other. We do not listen to each other anymore. And when a child comes up to you and tells you the same message that you are ignoring from other adults, that you know, um, it, it, it's just uh, this, um, this voice that you cannot help but listen to because it's coming from an innocent child. So um, <clears throat> I have learned that adults are more compelled to listen to children than they are to other adults. And so as an artist, it is very interesting. So as an artist, I started picking up on that and I'm like, why are children not performing for adults? Why are they not, um, you know, why are we not seeing plays where children are trying to communicate complex ideas to adult audiences? Um, because it seems, <clears throat> like I said, we've stopped listening to each other. And so, you know, when a child is coming up to you to communicate something, you're gonna listen to that child. Whereas, you know, we've just, as adults, we've just, you know, grown jaded. We ignore each other. We don't listen to each other. We don't care about each other. The world is falling apart, you know? I mean, I know that that sounds very cheesy, but it's this truth. You know, something can be cheesy and also be true, right? Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, and I like, yeah, I, I like how you, how you threw that out there, that, that adults are not listening to each other no, and, and having a, a child sort of do that conversation is really really putting a different spin and really getting adults to pay attention and so now what I what I feel like we all really appreciate about this play is that there is some political undertone and there's some serious community messages and yeah. things to really take away so um, with that in mind what political issues and what community issues really stick out to you in terms of what you want to send out with this play, what you want people to receive, as well as what you put out in your work. What messages do you plan to send? Well, I think that definitely in this play, uh, um, <clears throat> it being a parody of Glengarry, Glengarry Glen Ross won the Pulitzer Prize. Um, you know, despite the fact, you know, it has horrific language all the way through. It's, uh, it does, you know, um, have some controversial references to women, different cultural groups, you know, and that's what Mamet is known for. He's a, a very, you know, controversial playwright. But in this particular play, we are examining capitalism, the very dark side of capitalism and how it is completely um, soulless in um, anything wonderful. You know, it's all about this dog eat dog world. And um, if you think about it, there's lots of jokes about, you know, sales. And, you know, one of the jokes in um, Act Two is, you know, um, professional liars. One of the girls references professional liars. And it's like, what is that? Salespeople mm. <laughs> are professional liars. And so it just, it, it really just examines um, what we have lost, I guess, as a society, which is the love for each other and what's important. Because in this play, as in David Mamet's play, the only thing that's important is um, money. Who is selling the most real estate? Who is selling the most cookies? Who is on the board? Who drives the good car? Who's going on the dream vacation? You know, and that's what, <clears throat> I mean, that's what we value and that's what the play is speaking to. It's questioning those values and saying, is that really what's important? No, it's not. It's not what is important. So with this play, that's what, you know, that's what I think we're examining. I love that. And I think we're going to stick around and, and wait for the, the morale or the moral of the story to, to really rear its head and to really 
take full effect. Okay, so we've gotten plenty of background on this play, but now we want to know more about you. How long have you been in the acting entertainment arena, and where did you start? Well, um, I went to the University of Georgia. I, ha I got a degree in theater. I then went to Brooklyn College, got an MFA in acting. So all of my degrees are, you know, in theater performance. Um, but when I <clears throat> when I graduated uh, with my master's degree, I moved to Chicago. I got uh, injured on stage, and I moved back to Georgia, and I started directing theater. Mm -hmm. And I loved it even more than acting. <laughs> <laughs> and so I started directing children, and that's where I picked up on this, you know, new genre of theater that has yet to be explored. Um, Kyle Jarrow is someone that did a very merry unauthorized children's Scientology pageant. I directed his show at Dad's Garage Theater, and that was really the first show in this genre that I knew of. And then I, um, I tried to find out if anybody had ever done a one kid show, like a you know a one man show that's a small child, and it had never been done in the United States. And so I was like, well, I'm going to do that. So we did. I, I. Um, you know, commissioned this kid to write a show. Um, he was 12 years old, and it was for adult audiences only. And um, he was basically addressing um, adult audiences at the Woodruff Arts Center, and he was talking to them about what is wrong with the world, what he does not like about it, what they need to do to fix it. Um, he was talking about politics, and, and obviously children did not appreciate that, although there was nothing offensive in the play. They came to it, and they, you know, they thought it was, you know, very funny, um, you know, in parts, but the adults really loved it because it was speaking to them. It was not children's theater for children. It was children's theater for adults. And so um, once I did that, I was like, I'm going to do this forever. I love it, you know. And so I have all these things um, in my head that have yet to come out. And so they, they're they just getting started here with the Oak Theater. That is absolutely brilliant, Marie. And, it, and it's, it's so amazing to know that you are in essence, the only woman of your kind that is really introducing a genre of theater like this to Atlanta and to the world. So what would you say is next for you, Marie, in terms of projects and in terms of events and collaborations? Um, <clears throat> well, I really love Jim Davies. He, he wrote this play. And so if I end up doing, I really want to do some parodies, some more parodies of um, adult plays, adult films, you know, um, uh, films that are famous, like a Star Wars parody would be great, um, although that would also be geared towards child audiences also. But um, there's a few films in mind that, you know, are just really huge that I would like to see parodied. Um, and Jim would probably end up writing those scripts because I just, I really love him. I want to get a, a shout out to Jim Davies because he's amazing. But I also have some original plays that I am working on myself. I really would like to um, uh, put together um, a conspiracy theory series where uh, these kids, this is hilarious, the kids have built a treehouse in the form of a triangle, okay, in the shape of a triangle, and uh, it's, it's actually up in a tree, and they're studying the Illuminati and conspiracy theories. It's, it's downright hysterical, I'm telling you. And so kids are not going to get any of those references, like, you know, magic bullets, JFK assassination, and all that kind of stuff. These kids are studying these things. And um, they're like computer hackers and stuff. So I'm working on that script right now. Ooh. Yeah, it's, it's obviously a comedy. And, <laughs> you know, where these kids are, like, studying these conspiracy theories, and they're trying to figure out which ones are true and which ones are false. I would love to know what you dream about at <laughs> night to have these ideas and these conceptions come to light. It's just so cool. And I feel like it, the concepts that you're talking about are a lot of things that even adults don't recognize, don't pay attention to, <laughs> are really not aware of. So we thank you for that, Marie. Shout out your social media and your websites and okay. for people or for, for children that want to to be a part of your plays and productions, how they're able to do that. Okay, well, you ask about what I dream about at night, and I'll tell you right now, I dream about elephants in the room. That's what I dream about. Mm -hmm. I like to talk about the elephant in the room that nobody else wants to talk about. That's me. That's what I do. And uh, my website is www.charliesport.org. Um, it is an organization that works with kids. I do theater with kids. I write books with kids. I do film projects with kids. You know, and um, so you can, you know, go there and see what I'm, what I'm doing. Thank you so much, Marie Claire. Oh my gosh, thank you. amazing, <laughs> amazing, and thank you guys for watching Atlanta. I hope you enjoy the play Cookie Crumble, Cookie Toss. Please come out to see it if you can at 
the Oak Theater at Avondale States. I'm your host, Simone Jameson, for On the Guest List. Well, somebody told their cell phone in my phone and tried to let I pulled up my pants. Mine's on a minute. Robbery? Burglary. When? Last night, I guess. The lady! That's stupid! It's all there. She couldn't find an SUV on the 285. Guess what's the interview? The animal can go scratch. 125. Just because she's a grown up doesn't mean she can talk to me that way. I have right to charge you. Are you listening, LG? So I want to win. This morning. Just now? That's right, my friend. I'm fine. Impossible, my Helly King. Nick, are you you know, opportunity? Spare me, okay, Pam? I don't need to listen to this. What? They don't come along every day. These cookies will freeze. I love them. Yeah, I like the feet. You know, Mormons keep two years of food in their basements. It's all wise idea. Like, what this world is going to do? I'm I'm going to school. It's a great time to stop on these delicious gingerbreads. School? Gingerbreads? There aren't any leaves. No leaves? Stolen. I sold them gingerbreads. Gingerbreads. And I checked. I ought to worry about the fire, are you? No, it's coming. I'm a small <laughs> soft pillow. These are just okay, then. And let me tell you, they're fries. <laughs> and just what do you mean by that? Hold on. I'm trying to tell you what I... Anybody going out for donuts? Things are right in it. Things are just fine. <laughs> just a piece of shot. Anybody is going out. <laughs> us here on the guest list. I'm your host, Simone Jameson. And joining me now is the entire cast, the girl squad of Cookie Crumble, Cookie Toss. How are y'all feeling tonight? Yay! Yay. Okay. So you guys had, had some pretty intense scenes, exactly, starting with you, Riley. So, so what was the most fun part of working on this production for you? It was fun because I've never actually done a big theater production like this, so it was my first one, and... It was really fun just to hang out with all of them and just get to know the co the oh, part of Pamela. All right. And how about you, Star? Um, this is my first theater production too, so it was really hard to know all the lines, especially with my best friend. And so it was a little easy because they helped a lot, and we are very famous, as you can see. She's <laughs> a, she's awesome. She's awesome, and yeah. <laughs> 
Okay, yeah, great. Yeah. All right, and so what about you? Oh, well, this is actually my second one, and um, I don't really learn lines that quick, but it helped me learn because I have all kinds of friends around me, and it's and they help me, like, create shortcuts to, like, m remember the lines mm -hmm. in, like, big scenes like the bathroom scene. <laughs> yeah, which was pretty intense. And so now I also understand you play Georgette, and you also have scenes on Sleepy Hollow and, and other productions. Tell us more about that. Well, um, I don't really watch Sleepy Hollow, so I didn't really know what Sleepy Hollow was <laughs> until I got there, and then my mom like filled me up. So, and then like she, and I, I just had to be in the background. We were just playing, and you know, it, I didn't really have any friends there because I didn't know anybody, but it was pretty cool. Okay, awesome. <laughs> All right, girl. And so, how about you? Uh, my favorite part about this production was definitely the character of Gail, the character itself, and getting to bring it off the page because it's never been done before. It was a very special opportunity. Absolutely, and everybody was fighting and throwing stuff at you, Gail. We, we enjoyed that. It was hilarious. And so now, Destiny, you also had a small role going in, going to the Better Business Bureau, you know, for your mom and, and the whole scandal with the stealing. What was the most fun part about working on this play? Um, the fun part was that, that we get to meet new people, new friends, and that we get to l know our lines better. And that, yeah. And, um, <laughs> and our, um, our friends get to help us with the lines just in case we mess up. Yeah. Okay. Well, I definitely say we all really enjoyed watching all of you just sort of bring this into action and really making us laugh and making us think. So you guys did an incredible job. Are you, are you all pursuing acting at the moment or you're wanting to do other things? Um, I would like to do other things, like further in acting, because um, first when I started acting, I was like, you know, kind of, but then when I got into the theater, I started loving it and like meeting all dif different friends um, from different places. Okay. And what about you, Sophia? Um, well, I, I really like all everyone who's in this cast because they make me feel welcome into this show. Um, but I'm used to acting because I've done it since I was in first grade. But my favorite part about Bethany is when I get to yell at Gail. <laughs> <laughs> and we all really enjoyed that. And now, so Miss, you are the adult in the group. So how did, exactly, so, so how did that, that role come about for you and how did you really feel about it? I loved playing Mrs. Harberlin. Mm -hmm. My husband said I was typecast for the part, but uh, I like to think that's not really me. But my most fun part was getting to know these girls and um, having a great time with them on stage. But I have to say the character of Mrs. Harberlin was a lot of fun to play. Mm -hmm. So do you, do you have a, an extensive background in acting? What do you do outside of it? Um, well, um, I, I was in about uh, eight or nine productions years ago when this theater um, was part of our church, and we did several. We did some Broadway plays, and we did lots of just fun things. Um, and then I took some time off, and this opportunity came up, and I thought, you know, I've been away for about seven or eight years. It's time to get back in. So, <laughs> And the role looked like fun, and... It sure was. Yeah. So you played a mean Mrs. Harbinlin, man. I, man, we we enjoyed that. Thank you so much, girls. What's next for all of you? Um, I think the next thing for me is kind of more getting more into the acting, like getting more like lead roles, sometimes smaller roles, but getting more like acting jobs. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what about you? I actually have an audition coming up at the Lionheart Theater for a production of Robin Hood, so I'm very excited. Oh. I want to keep doing this. It's a lot of fun for me. Awesome. And what about you, Dustin? I actually want to keep doing it like Riley and um, Victoria said, because acting is fun, and I did it when I was um, younger, mm -hmm. and I like it. Okay. And Star, do you have anything to add to that? Mm, yes. Um, <laughs> um, I would like to stay in acting, because my goal is to be like in a movie of being a teacher and being um, like a professional dancer trying like kind of people are being mean to her but she stands out and I would because I never been in theater and this is my first time so it made me like not stay in my show make me have more personalities. Well, I would say, yeah, you are a pretty, pretty energetic Jew and 
jumping around and throwing stuff and screaming. Is that anything like you in real life? I'm kind of dramatic. That's what my mom says. Uh, she says I'm dramatic because sometimes when I'm in a car, I'm like, because I call my little car squishy. Because I'm so squishy. I just say it like that. I'm like, why do I have to ride in a squishy? Squishy is so annoying. And then my mom's like, you're so dramatic. <laughs> Thank you for that, Star. What about you? Well, um, I'm actually in a play right now that we're doing like read throughs. Um, it was for Hansel and Gretel, and um, I'm like we did the read through today, and I'm kind of okay with it. But like, I'd like to get like lead roles so that I'd be like outstanding in acting. Oh, but you are. You are. <laughs> we, we see that. Thank you so much. And what about you, Sophia? Um, well, during the summer, I'm doing orbit camp with some of my friends from school, and it's for Alice in Wonderland Jr., and I really want to audition for the White Rabbit or the Caterpillar, <laughs> but I don't usually want to be the lead roles. I like to be an ensemble or, like, one of the supporting roles, mm -hmm. because Sometimes ensemble can be a lot of numbers, and I like being on stage a lot. Okay, well, I would definitely say you guys are amazing, holy as a cast. The way you nailed those lines and the punches that you gave us, it was just nonstop action, and I personally absolutely love it. I'm hanging with the amazing cast of Cookie Crumble, Cookie Toss. These girls are amazing. Look for them on YouTube on Sleepy Hollow and every other production there is that they're coming at you and they're coming at you with a force. I'm your host, Simone James, for On the Guest List. Thank you for watching Atlanta. Stay tuned.